what up what up wimbush here and today we're going to be making something like this so it has this organic like no i don't know what to what to call it like this organic gooey type texture morphing going all around oh no i just thought it was cool i was playing around a redshift figured out how to use the noise shader to kind of mark the geometry without using any type of keyframes so yeah let's just get started show you how i did it I'm going to start with my blank canvas here. I'm going to go over here, make a sphere. And then for my radius, let's enlarge it up like 240. And then for our segments, since we're using redshift, you're going to want to up your segments to make it perfectly round. If you look here, it says render perfect, but that's only if you're using Cinema 4D. If you're using anything third party like Octane or um, Redshift like I'm using, then you have to up your segments to be able to get a perfect sphere. So 100 was a good point to start at there. Now let's start with um, making our material. So I'm gonna go to Redshift Materials, make a generic material, give that a second to load in, then hit Edit Shader Graph. Now to get that look that I had, that I had here, it's actually just white and it's using HDRs reflecting off it to give it that film look. So in here, in my color diffuse, I'm just gonna pull it all the way up to white. There we go. And then over here on the left-hand side under utilities, if I go under Cinema 4D or C4D, you wanna use a C4D shader. Now this is basically as if I was just using a native Cinema 4D shader. See, so if I click on this under shaders, you'll see all of our um, usual Cinema 4D sets in here. So I'm just gonna start with the noise. And then when I click on noise in my attributes window, we have our, our noise here. So let me, um, when you try to, um, actually, let me show you this. So we're gonna be using our noise inside of a displacement layer and the displacement is what's gonna um, affect the geometry. So if I come over here on my left-hand side and type in displacement, or just DI until I get displacement, drag that over here. Usually when I'm using a displacement map, you can, you can pipe it in to our output displacement, like so, our space type, make it a tangent. And then you could usually just left click your, your box here on your node and then drag it over and it's usually green. But with the C4D shader, it's not green. And that's because when you're using a C4D shader, you have to use another node to kind of tell Redshift, hey, this is coming from Cinema 4D. So with that one is, if you come over here, back under Find Nodes, if you look under Textures, there's a texture over here called Texture. Here we go. So we drag that over. Now we have an RS Texture tag. Now we'll left click our, our Cinema 4D shader and we're getting our green connection point. So I let go of the left click, go to general image, text zero. And then now I could go from out color over to my displacement. And then we'll just make it under texture, make it a texture map. So now everything coming out of the C4D shader is gonna be piped through our displacement and it's gonna affect our geometry. So let's, um, let's add our texture onto our sphere. And then actually let's set up our Cinema 4D render node or render output. So for this example, I'll just do 64 max samples. That should be good. And then let's go to render view and see what we have so far. So right now we just have a perfect circle and that's because we want to come over to our tags and add a render tag. I mean a redshift tag, sorry. So now under our attributes window, we want to come to geometry, go to override. And then we we'll want to enable our displacement and let's say max displacement 20 and maybe displacement scale 10. And now you can see everything starting to be affected by our, our noise shader. Now I can even come over here instead of projection. Let's see what cubic looks like. Yeah. So. I'll stick with the U, um, UVW, but you can play around with that, see what happens for you. 
let me go back into my shader graph. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit. Okay, like so. So I'm gonna go over here, play around with my noise shader a little bit. Now my attributes window, let's bring up the, the contrast. So bring it up, let's say about 70-ish. And as you can see, as I'm bringing up the contrast, it's affecting our geometry even more. And I don't want to see that pinching up at the nadir. So I'm going to center everything out. Let me close this out real quick. And I'm going to make a red shift camera. Select my camera and then go over to coordinates. And I'm just going to zero out my X, Y, Z. So zero, and then you hit tab to get to the next one. Hit zero again, zero, and then so everything is all zeroed out. If I look at my viewports, the camera is in direct center. So if I click back on my perspective and I hit the shortcut H, everything is aligned right in the middle there. So it's exactly where we want to be at. Let me bring back over in our render preview window. And there we go. So that's giving us the look that we were looking for. And I thought that I had it white. Let me check. So let me change this to black. Maybe I had it as black. Yeah, there we go. So we can't see anything. That's because I like lighting with HDRs and that's gonna give us our reflections that we need. So if I come over to our lighting and go to dome light, we can already see we're getting some of those hits and highlights over there. Now I found this HDR online and I'll actually, I'll leave a link to a project file in the description. I'll upload it to my Gumroad so you guys can follow along and see the textures that I'm using. But if I come in here, let me see. Yeah, it's called Studio 10 HDR. And there we go. That's giving us the look that we got within my final render here. And now to get rid of the background, I just click enable background and then alpha channel replace. And there we go. We get the look. That's exactly what we, um, what I had in my render there. And to be able to animate this without the keyframes, we'll have to go back into our, our noise attributes. So come back to the cinema 40 shader, click on noise. Then my attributes window over here where it says animation speed. I had it at around two. Now, the higher you go, the more the ball is going to morph and be affected by the displacement. And of course, the lower you go, the more fluid it's going to look. And so I found that two was a decent speed, but you know, go ahead and play around with that. And then to get some of those like techie dots, I used this free program. It's called, let me see what it's called, JC or JS placement. So I can show you guys how I made that. And you can actually just Google JS placement and it will come up and it's completely free. And you can come up with all type of cool um, patterns here. So you just click and it automatically makes a pattern. What I did was I took away all the dots and I only left the squares, I believe. So if I click all these down to turn them off and then click again, yeah, so that gives us a pattern. It's all squares. You can scale it up. You have all types of you have all type of attributes in here that you can work with. You know, pattern length, bring it up, minimum brightness, draw distance. So yeah, just go in there and play with it. Then they have all these other types too. But I like working with the dots. I mean it gives it a cool techie look. So I already um I already have one generated, but whenever you want to save it, you just click generate and then it will give you an option as a height map as well. You can save normals, all that good stuff. So it's pretty good for using in Cinema 4D. So to get the JS placement grid to make like this techie look outside of the ball here, I'm going to have to make another material. So I'm going to go to Redshift material. And I'm just going to name this one RS dot grid so I don't start getting stuff mixed up. Go to my edit shader graph. And I'm just going to drag and drop my dot grid here. So this is the dot grid that I already had pre made. I'm going to drag and drop. 
that in a Cinema 4D. And now, if I left or if I left click output color, drag it to my artist material, I could go down here to overall and do opacity color. Now you'll notice that everything goes blank up here, and that's okay. Everything is there, trust me. But what we'll want to do is go down to we'll click on our RS material, click overall emission. We'll want to make this white or depending on what color you want to make it. Basically, this is the light emission that's going to be coming through. And then our mission weight, we want to bring that up. And there we go. Like I said, everything is there. Let's just make it 1.5 to make it even. And now we're going to make another sphere. So I'm going to left control. I'm on PC, so I'm going to hold down the left control, left click, drag the sphere down. Now automatically makes a duplicate. So I'm going to just going to delete this and then on my redshift tag, I'm going to take off the override. Now let me take my dot grid, drag it over top of my sphere. And just so we don't have a clipping, I'm going to take my sphere radius up by like 10 centimeters. Now let's hit render and see what we have. And there we go. There's our dot grid. That's on UVW though. So my projection, I can make it a cubic. And there we go. Now we have a lot more. Of course, with the length UMV, you can control the sizing. So if I did 200 by 200, that gives us that look right there. So that's basically how I built that, um, how I built that scene out. Now to be able to get it to animate, you go over to your C40 shader click on noise then our attributes window like I said animation speed have it at two or whatever you want and that's going to control the globby moving around and everything and so next if I want to send this out for like after effects I'm going to have to go to um I like to set AOVs so let me see where my redshift is because I want to have an AOV for my my um my glossiness and i want to have one for my emissions so i can control all that stuff in after effects so let me see i always get this one lost i usually have it Let's see if i could drag this one over there we go yeah sorry i'm used to using my taskbar here but anyway so I have my AOV manager. I click and drag my admission over. And then let me get my reflections. Click and drag that over. So now whenever I go into a render view here, click on admissions. You see we have a pass for admissions. Click on reflections. You see we have a pass for reflections. And if you want, we can also add a puzzle map if you want more control over that stuff. So puzzle mat, object ID, make the red number one, green ID two. And if you want more in depth on what's going on here, I have a tutorial for that as well. But I'll click on my red shift tag, go to object ID, make this one one, click on my grid one, make this one two. So now when I go to my render view, Click under puzzle mat. Now, so our glob is red and then all of our emission dots are gonna be green. So when we bring that into After Effects, we'll have a little bit more control over that. So last thing is for my GI, I like using a radiance cache. And then for a secondary, the point cloud. And that should be it. And then also, if you look at my other video where we go over these render settings, we could do max samples at 128, then go under sample overrides for reflection, make that 128. That helps reduce the fireflies in there. Then we should be good to go. You just output it and then um, you'll composite everything in After Effects, which I'll go over on the other video. But if you liked whatever I showed you here, please leave a comment if you didn't understand something or you want me to go over something more in depth 
you know just shoot me a message leave a comment please leave a thumbs up and share the video subscribe and then make sure you check out part two if you want to see how to composite everything that i have in here so until next time keep creating or i'll see you on the next video thanks again